number, number 13. 13. We're behind a few weeks. Well, we took a few weeks off. We took a few well-needed weeks off. We That's do have true. some content from last week. We might run it sometime. Yep. We might run some stuff from Austin from two weeks ago. That's when true. Atticus, we went to Austin for uh, His four son's days. Graduation. He graduated with honors, etc. And uh, we get some goofy stuff from there. We might run it. We might not. Yeah, we might, we might run the uh, footage of our trip in Greece if we had a if we ever went trip in, in Greece. I'm um, wearing protective. He's wearing some nice protective uh, copper jewelry today. I'm feeling like I need protective energy. I uh, I'm unshower, but I think it's okay. Sometimes, you know, no one would probably even know. But of course, I feel like I need to say it in case anyone's watching. Going, did Jenny shower today? And uh, I've talked a lot about this on shows before. This is the um, the jade roller. You can get this for about twenty five dollars. <laughs> and uh, this piece of shit, I mean, amazing jade roller try? that's taking me back to youth. I don't know, but you know what? Even if it doesn't take rid of my lines, it is like a rolling pin. I think it might give me a little like cherubic look for a second. Couldn't it just stretch it out and, and make it, it worse? It feels like good. It feels like a cool a cool roll. Roll of stone and hopefully <laughs> as you watch the show, it's like I just it's like oh my god, she looks 28 right now. I mean, I can't believe I'm 30. <laughs> using a jade roller. It is nice. It is nice and cool. It does feel good. And this is the jade. Let me just tell you, there's she also, also has a, rose uh, quartz. Now, I'm not, I mean, so that's all I've seen, but where's the amethyst roller and the onyx? The onyx. Would, would that I'm be for sure Americans only? I don't think so. I think it's, it's for other... Uh, but you know what? These probably don't work because I was, uh, I got a bunch of fertility stones and uh, let me tell you, they didn't do shit. Uh, so I saved them, but they well, didn't do anything. What kind anything. of stones were they? They were all supposed to be centered around healthy uh, pregnancies and uh, all good. And that didn't end well. So well, my fertility stones, stones are withering work. anyway, mm. so to speak. Anyway, so here we are, Barncast 13. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in the saddle. It's good to be it's good back, to be back on set. Good to, good to be back. <laughs> in the um, studio. And, you know, it, it felt like a natural sort of time to take a pause, regroup, re-tool, uh, beginning, beginning of summer, and kind of retool a little bit. We got a lot of new stuff coming up for the Barncast from here forward. We're not going to call it season two. We're not even going to call it anything mock right. two. That's true. But those Part in two. the know, a new phase has begun. It's like the age of Aquarius has begun. Oh, God. Right. This is the dawning. Let's just know. Um, so shout out to Grillsdale 2019. Back for its fourth year is the food event of the summer. If last year is to be an indication, Grillsdale will sell out fast, so get your tickets sooner than later. Live from Boston, Ska, Traditionalist, Void Union, and Copeg Zone, The Wonderful, they'll be with us next Thursday, Wild Weeds. All food, craft beer, wine, and non-alcoholic beverages are included with the ticket price. Ticks are available online at grillsdale.com. Grillsdale.com. And at HGS Home Chef in Hillsdale, New York. So look forward to that on August 24th. And if you're not going there, come here, please. Oh, yeah, well, Picky Bastards <laughs> Picky are playing Bastards here that night. So, that you got day, a tough, so you've got a tough decision that's, to make right true. there. Um, also, let's give a shout-out to uh, the farmer's wife in Ancrumdale, New York. Chef, um, Chef Job Yacubian or Chef Job Almi. As <laughs> we got to We don't know. Him. We copied, um, we put some copy on one of the postings that has Job's name and suddenly it says Job Almi. Yeah, and I'm not Job, sure. Job, if you're listening, write and tell us what the fuck's going please, on with I'm your name. I'm getting sick here. And then the last one is. Uh, but he brings us the, uh, and he's due with a batch. He is of, due. We're waiting. Everyone's waiting. Everyone's for the next waiting. Batch. You don't know how many people come and go. I want that old fashioned. No, they really. I've heard about the farmer's out. old fashioned. They love those kumquats. People love the whiskey. I think it tastes better than with the cherries. I haven't tried it, but I. Know I don't it. drink brown liquor anymore. Me Jenny either. told me it makes me a fucking asshole, so I don't drink no, it anymore. No, you know what? Did you ever see um, the movie? Jekyll and Hyde. What's it called? Uh, Last American Werewolf. Well, yeah, that's actually. Is that a movie? I mean, what did I say? American Werewolf in London? <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> Wait, I'm American Werewolf in right London. Now. Last American Werewolf. <laughs> Wait a second. My is hands that? Are like this. <laughs> but anyway, that is what happens tonight. When I drink bourbon. Didn't used to be that way. 
Chestnut Woodworking, Woodworking and Antique Flooring Company, Chestnut Bob and Gina Olson, wonderful sponsors of what we do here, and we are big supporters of theirs. Go yes. to their showroom in Cornwall, Connecticut, and in Kent, Connecticut. Kent, Kent New York. God, for Christ. No. We've been through this. We, she chewed us out. Okay. They're both in Connecticut, Cornwall, and Kent, right? Yes. I need an inner ear piece like in the theater. Yeah, you like uh, Marlon Brando and, uh, and uh, Kent, Kent. Kent Dempsey. Uh, what's in the Dempsey? <laughs> Uh, not Dempsey. Sheen in uh, Depeche Mode. Um, Johnny Dempsey. Johnny Depp. Anyway. And car hardware in Great Barrington. That's right. Love in car cars. hardware in exactly. cars. Mm -mm. When you need a new gun. Oh, wait. Right. When, when you, you need, need to a paint, paint job it. And you don't have much hog. It's cars. Some hog. I don't know. I like that for money. Yo, yeah, man, you got my hog. Yo, you got my hog here. Yeah, I need a All right, dollar. so those are our sponsors. We definitely would like some more sponsors. We need as much help as we possibly can get That's to continue true. this outreach work, this mission sometimes work. Sometimes our microphones break. Sometimes we don't have the right uh Sometimes props. artists come in. Like last Friday, they jump on, jump up and down on all the gear and smash it over their heads like so a we gorilla. We need some extra cash. <laughs> So Wednesday night, open mic is now at 7 o'clock. We moved it up. The yes. music starts Please. earlier, the so you can sign up any time up after 5. I also want to say something here and now. Unless it's like the planning board meeting. They just talked right over each other the whole time last night. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Thursday night, the Hay Rollers with yes. Jim Wright, Kip Biacco, Matt Downing, Matt and Downing, Lucas and Lucas Schwartz. And are they, is, uh, is somebody coming on slide this week? We don't know. I'm not sure. We don't know. I'm not sure. But Could be a surprise slide player. That's Thursday night at 8 o'clock. So fun. Great band. Authentic. All old tone old cats showing up to play the old book of Americana yeah. music. They're great. It should be fun. And on a lovely summer night. Live. Grateful Dread on Friday night, Tom Major's band uh, that does all Grateful Dead material with a reggae twist. It's and like it's great. Bob Marley and Jerry Garcia had a child. And we're really stoned. And Well, yeah, of course of they were. But that's it's okay. Right. Come down. It's $15. Um, it's 8 a great night of music. It long is. night of music. Everybody dances. And as a special treat this week, we've been able to get a short interview slot with none other than jerry garcia i mean so let's go to uh let's go to the tape of our interview with jerry garcia yeah. um from it's the dead really really special dead from the dead dead from the dead ah mr garcia yeah, welcome man, it's oh groovy. jerry it's, it's so good me, to have you here i can't even i seriously am at a loss for words yeah, of how yeah. happy i am what it means to us to have you at our venue been listening i've been hearing your music since i was a child how are things up there jerry how you doing Hey, you know, man, it's wild. It's out of sight up here. It's like nothing I thought it would be like, man. It's like it's like being in Boca Raton, Florida every day. I'm sure the people at home, Jerry, would love to hear um, what you've been doing lately, what you've been working on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. For sure, man. We're laying down some heavy stuff up here, man. We got Joe Bach. Yeah. You know, we got uh, Scriabin. That cat, he's out of sight, man. You know, Aretha Franklin singer backups and uh, now that Dr. John's here, we finally got a good keyboard player, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's groovy, uh, man. Please it's groo tell everyone out there, what were some of the hardest uh, struggles you had to deal with with the other band members and just being in the dead hardest thing about being in the dead man hands down was bob weir man that guy was crazy man he he did more motherfucking drugs than anybody man everybody thought it was me but it was him and we get instagram up here look at him he's doing jumping jacks and and lifting weights and everything now man he's crazy man that guy that guy was a real problem man. he's always smashing watermelons over his head and acting crazy um we have tons of them here i've seemed to have been around them all my life everywhere i've ever worked uh, is there any advice you can offer to up-and-coming jam musicians or jam bands in general? Yeah, man, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I guess my advice to people going to jam band world, man, would be like, uh, you know, maybe think about an associate's degree or some technical training, you know, Apex Tech, something like that. That's, you know, that that's pretty cool too, man. You seem like someone who has a really good grasp and, like, lighthearted view on life in general. Is there anything, uh, do you, what's the meaning of life? 
Yeah, man, the meaning of life. Well, you know, the meaning of life is to give life meaning. You know what I mean? Say, man, and, you know, maybe learn to cook a good meal, some uh, beans, and uh, a roast con pollo. <laughs> well, thanks for your time, Mr. Garcia. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Please Great pop down you. again. Well, that was beyond exciting, guys. It really was. I mean, Jerry Garcia I I from will. The Afterlife. Hey, let's roll a clip of The Grateful Dread. Yes. With Tom Major and crew. Roll a clip. Okay, Saturday night, an unbelievable treat. Okay. Unbelievable. Revel and Dimes is here for the third time. Third time. It's a band from New York. Um, lead vocals is Kia Warren. She is unbelievable. They are just a heavy, sweaty, swampy, bluesy, Rocky. rock and roll soul. You'll definitely be dancing. It's it's a great it's a great night. And on top of it, they are the fantastic band that does our uh, theme, theme song. Yeah, right. That's amazing, too. So um, I. All right. So I'm going to roll this Revlon Dimes clip. It does have a little something happen with our mic at the end of it. You can see it goes crunch, crunch. But whatever. If you have a problem with that, go fuck yourself. Yeah, here's the clip. It's great. Roll the clip. <laughs>
fix you something to eat Maybe make you a drink Let's talk about the world and everything yeah. Darling, what do you think? Lay your bones on the bed Reveling Dimes, Saturday night. Sunday night, karaoke. Sunday night, karaoke. And as the summer heats up, so do the songs and the vibe. I and lift me up, up where, where we, we belong. belong. Where the eagles fly. <laughs> <laughs> they just oh. took all of the Billy Joel off of Carafon. Oh, my God. He must have. He must have been sick of it. He's like, I'm tired of people standing around bars singing my songs. Shit. But Could you imagine? It's like uh, it's like the entertainers come to pass. Wait, Remember? how does that Put work? Put it on the, d- d- I know how in the well, discount I'm rack like a knob, the can mm-hmm. of beans. Uh, next, next week's week, entertainment. This week too. Thursday uh, is the Wild Weeds. With a uh, special amazing call band bill. trio from Rochester, New York. Uh, these guys look like they're going to be loads of fun, kind of. What are they called? The Televisionaries. Televisionaries? Hey, wait a minute. We've got a uh, uh, an online clip. I believe there is an online Let's clip. Let's roll the online Let's clip. clip. Roll the clip! Oh, well, well, Oh, 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 oh,
his third time back i he, believe it, the great peter mulvey is what I'm he sorry, goes the mind. great peter mulvey um is a fantastic stupendous singer songwriter he's a beautiful storyteller um quintessential american folk artist yeah. was chris smithers uh protege for years he's this his third show here he's great he's going to be a uh, Who's opening up for him smooth he's a smooth he's sailing a smooth artist where smooth it just feels like just uh very easy breezy and wonderful. And Lisa Bastoni, we've had her here before. She's another wonderful folk artist. She is she's from the Boston area. Yep, and she's nominated for what is it? A care? It's not nominated, but she's invited. Sorry, yeah. She's in, she was invited this year as a emerging folk artist to the Kerrville Folk Festival, which right. is an enormous festival in the Texas Hill Country. In Kerrville, I believe, right? Isn't right. That, they, that's yeah. why they call it the Kerrville yeah. Folk Festival. Okay. Let's roll a clip of um, Lisa. And of uh, of the mini doc that we did with Peter after yeah. his uh, with interviews and clips from uh, after his first show, let's roll the mini doc clip. I love how well my jokes are going over tonight. This is great. Like there's sort of this because the sense of discomfort is growing not quite as fast as the sense of trust, but like you know it's a race. You know, like I don't think we know. It's a warm summer evening, I can tell the stare of a knuckleball sweet. It is a warm summer evening, I can tell the stare of It's got to be my mother singing. My mother sang to us from the very beginning. I remember a camp song. I love the flowers, I love the daffodils. Yeah, I love the mountains and the rolling hills. I remember that. This town is a talisman. It's a vanishing beat. This town is a talisman, and aren't we a vanishing breed? But our soul is a first chair, the older, lost in the weed. Like I grew up in Milwaukee. I was talking to you about this before. Milwaukee is a hard place, but I was not the man because I was so clearly an outsider in that I was an intellectual and I was a I was a very sensitive emotional white kid and so like I just wasn't I wasn't the oppressor do you know what I mean so I was just always kind of lost and a little scared if that makes sense so I'm just from the two places like hand-me-down clothes and getting beat up and fucking reading Tolkien at 10 you know and that's me the old cafe while the little river goes by slow, the river really likes it that way. Sell is barefoot in the backyard, calling out to the star of the night. I mean, there is a process, and that is to be constantly journaling and constantly assembling lists of songs that I might write. You know, like put them on the last page of a notebook so that you're heading towards a destination. You're the wine, you're the wine, you're the wine. Think of it as mulch, you know, and all the little fits and starts are there, and very rarely do any does any of that material make it into a song. But it's sort of like the overlay that the songs sprout up out of. The 
record that has most torn my head off in the last three, four, five years was Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. And you know, that's not my genre. I don't under, you know, I, I, I know so little about that, but that record just undid me. Uh, it's just heavy, you know? And a stunt and just an, a, a pinnacle storytelling record. It's a warm summer evening. Oh, I hear the sweet. It's a warm summer evening. Jenny Scheinman is a violinist and she calls it the golden hand moment. There's a moment in art where you feel like it's really happening and it's as though a golden hand is sort of perched over you. And, and as she said, the quickest way to notice, the quickest way to end a golden hand moment is to notice and to think, hey, I'm having a golden hand moment, you know. Brand new 64 Dots, the second tune of the evening, that was pure golden hand moment. And of course, it's followed by moments where you're taken out of it. This is a song by Greg Brown. This is called Brand New 64 Dodge. Yeah, when he was when he was my age, I would have been uh, twenty three and twenty four and opening shows for him, you know. And he just took me under his wing and took me everywhere and was kind to me and showed me how it's done. Like he, he he's an exemplary artist and he's an exemplary citizen of the artistic community like he's just a good guy he's solid he's pro he shows up on time he's respectful people like him it was, it was great two three years and he gave me his entire audience and you know i've been thinking about this all these years and and now all of a sudden there's you know a whole handful of young people that are opening shows for me and i get so much out of that and it's the first time in my life that i that it's come home to me. Because Smither would always say, you know, I'd say thank you, I, I can't repay you. And he'd be like, you fucking kidding me, man? I get more out of this than you do. And now I understand. Like, I want to call him up and say, you're welcome. Then I will play football with my buddies down in the park. Later I will go and dream about my girlfriend as I lie alone in the dark as I lie alone. You have your transcendent shows, and no one gets to control those, and those happen. And then you have your very good shows, and you work towards those. And then there are your workaday shows. Getting your act together as an artist just means bringing your workaday shows up to as close to your good shows as you can. You know, if that, and that's a much more interesting project than searching for inspiration. Saturday night, the boys are back. The B -teams. The boys are back in And town. that yeah. is, they were here a few weeks ago. They're always great. Everyone knows it. The, the BTUs are one of the best, so please come down Saturday night, next Saturday night. Next Saturday, the 22nd. The 23rd, we're closed on that, on that karaoke oh, night for right. a wedding, actually. And it's uh, one of the last weddings of the season, yes. maybe ever, because I'm sick and tired of them. Yeah, you guys, we love love, but they ain't going to happen here. <laughs> That's for sure. And um, for we're sure. gonna we're going to uh, be closed that night because Bucky Hayes in the Commonwealth. That's right. He's are all getting marrying married. each other. It's a it's a new thing. It's where a whole band can marry themselves. It's a polygamous nice. polygamous yeah. union between mm -hmm. five men. Mm -hmm. All right. So this week we uh, we hear from Roberta from Lake Placid. She writes, "Dear Dr. Jones, been having a hard time coming to grips with all the hate I see in the world." How do I deal with this and still have fun in life? Sincerely, Roberta from Lake Placid. Dear Roberta, I've read your question over and over several times now, and I have to admit I have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. Of course there's hate in the world. Everywhere you cast an eyeball, it's the reason the world is in as good a shape as it is. Love, that's the real mystery. Why love brings mostly heartache and misery. Ask any elder of a certain age what's brought them the most grief in their lives, and they'll start rattling off a list so long, they'll probably pass out from lack of stopping to take a breath. 
What's always at the top of the list? Ungrateful children, cheating, unappreciative spouses, vindictive exes. I mean, the list is endless. And what's the genesis of it all? Love. As a younger person, tell me what's worse than when you have the hots for someone and you find out that the object of your affliction wouldn't mount you if you were the last chopper out of Saigon. You might as well just ask someone to kick you in the face every hour on the hour. And love is everywhere. Why the phrase fall in love comes from the fact that it's so plentiful you can trip over it. Tell me, Roberta, do you enjoy tripping over things? On the other hand, it takes effort to work up a good righteous hate and focus it on a worthy issue. There are so many things deserving of a good hate. Where would we be without a hate for things like slavery, racism, poverty, terrorism, child molestation, war, and that childproof packaging you can't open with anything short of a chainsaw? Without hate, those things would take over and ruin our beautiful world. So, Roberta, the next time you start hating on hate, which is something I personally hate, go fall in love. It would serve you right. Sincerely, with all due respect, my friend, and certainly not yours, Dr. Jones. Well, certainly has renewed my faith in humanity. That is true. I knew we could turn to him, always. What's that I hear? The little ching-ching of... The Moss The Report. Moss Report. Each week, Slink Moss is out there in the field, up there in the sky, and down in the gutter. We don't know where. <laughs> And uh, he's telling us like it is, or there's video, there's something. So let's see where Slink is today. Hi, everybody. This is the Moss Report for June 6th, and I'm listening to records, vinyl records. I got some cool records from Spike's Record Rack and Cat Skill, some jazz. I like to listen to jazz. Uh, there's a Lionel Hampton record I got and is awesome. There he is playing. And uh, I got this Ventures record called Beach Party. Awesome record. It was originally called Mashed Potatoes and Gravy. Ventures Beach Party. I got incredible Jimmy Smith. Incredible music. I got Elvis. How great that thou art this guy really believed the songs are amazing elvis and then at damn bunny's record store in hudson called john doe records i got this gene vincent record where every song is good every song is good then at a tag sale like a yard sale i got the birds and i got fats waller and I got this incredibly hard rocking record, Bill Haley and the Comets Live in London, Greatest Hits. This record will blow your mind. And I got George Harrison, All Things Must. I wanted to play you my favorite song from this George Harrison record. Um, and what, I'm cleaning the dust off of it. I got it at a tag sale. Um, this is the Moss Report, by the way, and my favorite song is called Wawa, and I'll just let it play for a little bit. This is the Moss Report for June 6th. We love you. That's incredible. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Bigfoot has been sighted in the Berkshires yet again. You read this. Jenny brought this to my attention. This is my favorite. And we have piece. decided to dedicate a certain portion of the program henceforth Just into finding Bigfoot. Finding Bigfoot. Be he has been spotted for years and years. It says in here, this his spottings, sorry, sightings. Dates back to, I believe, 1765. That's correct. Bigfoot sightings uh, dating back yeah. to 1765. Decide for yourself. He's been seen a lot in October Mountain. Yes. And we are going to trek up that mountain at some point. I mean, right. I, I really have a thing for um, strange creatures. Uh, Loch Ness Monster, the Mothman. Um, Me. Nick. And I'm always trying to get to the bottom of it and really find out who's seen him. I mean, I'm fascinated by this. Apparently, this guy is six or seven. That's 
the weird thing is they say six or seven feet tall. I mean, which is it? Is he six? Is it seven? And red fur with strangely long arms and elongated pointy fing- uh, features. Am I right? Yeah, I was going to read uh, part of this uh, sighting just Great. for the people. Just yes, to get. please. Now, you can find this on a very fine um, uh, uh, online publication called something. Berkshire. I think Na- it was Travel. Nature. Oh, I saw Bigfoot something in Travel. And Big- Leisure? Travel New England. Yeah, that's not quite travel and leisure. No, but it... We may be scraping the bottom of the uh, of the of the journalism. It was a major barrel. publication on travel. Major. This is I love a, saying a, major article. publication. This is an article in from the a Berkshire Berkshire travel yeah, publication yeah, yeah, citing Bigfoot in the Berkshires recently. And I'd like to read to excerpts from it certain for you people right here in the barn. Maybe some of you will understand. The other night I talked about finding Bigfoot because and nobody fucking nobody got the Bigfoot gag. And so obviously there's no love for Bigfoot, but I know I there is. I say we circle back to Human Z too, oh, just definitely. since since Sometimes. we didn't get the laughs Please. the other night. Yeah. All right, 10 p.m. Sunday, August 21st, 1983, in the small town of Washington, Massachusetts, four friends were enjoying a steak and chicken cookout <laughs> <laughs> near Camp Eagle at an abandoned boys' camp in Felton Lake. Camp abandoned since 1970. <gasps> It stood on two legs, silhouetted in the trail and the moonlight. It was huge. Eric Durant, age 18, and Frederick Paradine, age 22, say later that few days later. I don't scare easily, but it scared me. Though this is perhaps the most famous record of Bigfoot sighting on October Mountain, it is certainly not the only one. October Mountain, so named by famed New England writer Herman Melville. Moby Dick. Now I see a connection. Moby Dick, Bigfoot. Moby exactly. Foot. Moby Foot. Because of its stunning fall color has been the focus of paranormal investigations, spooky documentaries, and eyebrow-raising stories from UFOs, from stale, strange creatures running amok, are more certain recent sightings of ghostly young girl hanging around her grave. Do you hear that? A g- girl hanging I'll around her grave. Her. There's always that girl in the There's white There's no clothes. shortage of lore here. And Bigfoot, well, he's a little bit of a local celebrity. Durant and Parody ran back to the campsite. About an hour later, they and their friends packed up and headed out. They took an hour to get out of there? Are you serious? If I saw <laughs> fucking Bigfoot, I would, <laughs> I would be out the door. Uh, they headed out. They climbed into their car. <laughs> flicked on the headlights. <laughs> and saw it again. This time, from the safety of a motor vehicle, they were able to get a better look. It was crouched down in the bushes. With dark brown fur and eyes that seemed to glow in the car's light. It's estimated between six and seven feet tall. The creature was almost, but not quite, human. Six years later, another Bigfoot sighting circulated. A man had been hiking in a well-traveled air trail up in the mountain on July evening, when he was spotted reddish-brown creature crouched in a brush. As bra- <laughs> As a rather experienced hiker, he was less startled than curious. He pulled out his binoculars, binoculars, just as the creature moved into the clearing. Curiosity quickly became fear. The creature was covered in fur and wasn't like any animal the man had ever seen. Its face, slightly elongated with rather pointy features, was less furry than the rest of the startling-like human body. Its arms, just a little too long to be normal, were reaching into the brush to move aside rocks, presumably in the search for bugs. The hiker was fascinated with the creature's treatment of the rocks. Each stone it picked up was carefully stacked into a small pile, also known as a can. Perhaps he was going to bury him under it. <laughs> you should know that if Bigfoot's stacking gravestones up near you, you got to tap out. You're right. Apparently satisfied with its evening snack of bugs, the creature stood up, its long furry arms stretched all the way to its knees. Well, wait a minute. One, two, two. Come on. So do mine. It was tall, if not tall, taller than a human. It turned its head and slowly began to move back into the woods. A hiker didn't stick around to find out where it was headed. He ran. The first recorded account of this Bigfoot sighting was in 1765 when a group of explorers in Great Barrington, that's right here, right here. allegedly found the creature sleeping. Yeah, he spent a little bit too much time in the barn that evening, sleeping in the, sleeping in the brush, the brush. 
Again, in 1895, a North Adams newspaper printed a town selectman's account of seeing it. More recently, the creature was spotted lurking in the, brush, the bushes near a human becket, walking along Route 7 in Williamstown and knocking sticks together on Mount Greylock. Oh, oh, oh. Well, the verdict's still out. Could the creature be real? If so, why can't we prove it? If not, why do we keep seeing it? On your next trip to the Berkshires, please be sure to keep an eye out for this furry mystery. You might never know what you might see. Well, that's incredible. I mean, all jokes aside, I know that part of me is making fun, but the other part, I mean, what else are they seeing? I'm serious. Well, they say there's Bigfoot, there's UFOs. I mean, this place is crazy, guys. Not there's, only is it full of uh, crazy people. Every, I'm sorry. Crazy there are, stuff. There's too many people that see shit. I know there's a lot of crazy people in this world. Half of them come here, but... I, this is too strange with the furry and the, uh, I'm telling you. I mean, uh, all kinds of there. crazy stuff. I've seen UFOs up here. All kinds of stuff. The only thing. I saw a UFO when I was 10 years old. Right, I remember a you saying A big one. That. I'm talking like close encounter style. Cluster, giant cluster of lights flying. I, I know that. I was get, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. I'm, you don't have to. I, I'm saying I know that. I was just getting to that. We're going to sign off. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Here? Yeah, where are I you? I grew up in Pine Plains, Eliza. Oh, right. We talked about yeah. that one. Night. Wait, yeah. You were the reporter that? there, right? Yeah, I was the reporter oh. for the Register Herald. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Which is no well, longer. That's right. You, it isn't? Oh. No. Uh, yeah. We That's just get funny. a little section in the Millerton so Hold on. What year did you graduate high school? 2008. Wow. I had my 10 year reunion last year. So I was there. You were like. Uh, did I tell you the story about the the Chinese delegation? Were we yeah, talking Nanjing about Nanjing twenty? Uh, <laughs> shout yeah, out that, to Nanjing twenty nine. That is a really funny story. <laughs> Our partner school. So in Pine Plains, in Pine in Stissing High School in Pine Plains, they had an exchange program with uh, with Chinese school in uh, in China where they would swap 16, 20 students every year, yeah, right? Yeah. They go and come back. And so I was the reporter for the Register Herald yeah. when they came, and it was the craziest thing. Uh, first of all, I went to photograph the, the welcome dinner, and I was so stoned I didn't put right. fucking Food. <laughs> film in the oh, camera. God. And then, But I'm glad I didn't because it was a, a oh wild God. embarrassment. The principal got drunk and fell down. Oh, right, right. They <laughs> made this cheap paper dragon, and then the Chinese kids just seemed really uh, – like they they were like snarling and they have terrible uh, yeah. they have terrible this is not a racist comment mainland chinese what? people have a different standard of table manners oh. than your average westerner right and they shovel they and, shovel yeah they shovel a it. lot and spit and throw so <laughs> and they i think they went to the chinese restaurant and got fried rice for them when they came so <laughs> yeah we, we like to really <laughs> do it up for a big do, do you have any r r goofy recollections from the chinese delegation or were they friendly to you well my i didn't go i'll i don't know why i didn't go my we hosted two chinese students in be, uh, how you they all have chinese names that when you're in a le, uh 11th to 8th grade you right. can't pronounce so, so right. what were their names at, we would give them names <laughs> 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 and, like uh. my bro i remember the two students we had one of them my brother just started calling him chad <laughs> um and the other one Asked to be called Cross because he thought that was a good American name. Was Chris Cross big at the time? <laughs> I don't know. Chad, <laughs> Where he came over really Chad good. the Chinese exchange <laughs> yeah. student. Yeah, that's that's a first. And oh uh, uh, I want to call you. Call me Chad. <laughs> Stop it. You call me Cross. I think my mom's computer is still is like has so many viruses from weird Chinese <laughs> porn that he downloaded. I don't oh know. God. <laughs> But uh, maybe he was saying Claus, like Santa Claus. He could he be. He could be. Oh, yeah, Cross. But no, yeah. no, Cross. <laughs> so it, stupid. It, when, <laughs> I heard all the stories from all my friends that went there, and it was just like, <laughs> it was everyone was just getting massages that they shouldn't and, like, wow. and oh, buying. Wow. Um, uh, so my, my my good friend, he when they went, they were trying to buy these, like, BB gun things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, airsoft. And, yeah, airsoft like, guns. Yeah, and they got taken. Them. 
they were in like Shanghai in some market and they were trying to buy oh these things God. and they ended up going all these back alleys, back alleys yeah. into a house, into a basement where they opened up the basement and there was a bunch of no. machine guns. Jesus. Like yes. real machine yeah. guns. And then and I they're mean, kids. Yeah. So oh send your God. send your ninth graders to China with an exchange program and right. this is this is the thing. Yeah, you, you get back like Rambo or paramilitary yeah. organization. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, that was a weird job. And then they got really angry when uh, the town got furious um, because I didn't put enough pictures of the parade in. Oh, right. And they li- the guy literally showed up. The other like, what's your fucking problem? <laughs> yeah, you, we'll run you out of town. Because I went from there. And yeah. then the, there's a Jewish lady put a menorah float in the, uh, in the, the first time they had a menorah in the holiday Christmas parade. Right. And it was like a whole, it was fascinating. It was a whole like yeah, yeah. constitutional argument about whether she should be permitted to have her menorah float. Oh, did she get it, it 20 in? 20 she got a menorah. She was a ball busting oh, New York shit. Jewish lawyer, too. Right. She was like expat from New York. She was a pain. Pine Plains is a wonderful place. <laughs> <that I am. laughs> yes, let us, just so we know. He it is, is, a, it is the paramount of country pleasantry, <laughs> I must say. It is. It's a nice town.